Disclaimer, expertise included and all affiliated do not own anything in this, this video. Please, please support the official releases. I will put links down to all the, all the actual releases and an apology for any mispronunciation that is shown in this video. Much love, the brain. This is the second part of the Naruto saga. This week we're going to be going into my personal favourite part of the whole Naruto story. That's covered from issue number 28 to 72. Naruto Shippuden. Yeah, and first things first, we're going to cover a few things. I was well aware of the fact that my headband last week was completely on backwards. I'm well aware of that fact. Well, I didn't realise until after I'd uploaded the thing that it was there like that. It was kind of frustrating, but oh well. Leave it in. Show the struggle. Show the struggle, per se. So, first things first about Naruto Shippuden. Same as Naruto, it was licensed by Viz Media and had an original run of February 15th, 2007 and it's still ongoing. Even though the manga's finished, the anime is still going. Its current episode thing is... It's 437 episodes so far. That's a lot of episodes. <laughs> That's so a typical shonen man anime or manga. Let's start go straight in. Same characters that were revealed in earlier earlier series. We've got our main protagonist, Naruto Uzumaki. Now he's gone off training with a character named Jiraiya, or Pervy Sage, who's kind of Naruto's mentor. And he's been gone for three years, making him, I think, about 15 at the start of Shippuden. And so he's grown up, and this is why I like it better than the original Naruto, is because it's slightly more adult and dark and it goes into quite especially with characters that are introduced later my personal favorite characters so as the series starts Naruto comes back to Konoha and meets up again with uh, teammate Sakura not Sasuke because Sasuke's, he done, yeah, he, he's gone, for now, and a teacher, Kakashi, and they start training and all that, and we're introduced to old characters again, the characters we, we grew to love, like, um, all the teams like Shikamaru, Choji, Ino, Kiba, Shino, Hinata, Rock Lee, Ten Ten, Neji, all of them. But they've grown up. They've grown up and some of them, mainly mainly Neji, have become a Jonin, elite level ninja. The rest of them become tuning, except for Naruto, because he wasn't there to do the the whole tuning exam. And all of that sort of happens, we're introduced, we have got some funny moments, especially a particularly funny one, is this whole overriding storyline between Hinata and Naruto, that Hinata's not seen Naruto for so long, and she's all like, oh my god, he's... 
and she yeah she faints it's it's hilarious I suppose you have to be there to find it funny but take my word it is funny um and then we're introduced to a character well, we were introducing to him earlier on but I didn't really go into him but because his main storyline kind of happens out to a character called Gara and the well, and he's become Kaze Kage, or leader of the Sand Village, which is an opposite village to Konoha. And he, like Naruto, is a Jinchuriki. He has a tailed beast inside him, namely the one tail Shikaku. And that's all kind of going awesome, Naruto's catching up with everyone, he does a training bit with Kakashi where he finally gets the bell and all that happens but then things take an unexpected turn for the worst like like he's want to do in anime two characters shuffle through the desert wearing black robes with red clouds on them and these two characters are members of the main groups of villains in Naruto Shippuden one of the big pr pretty much throughout the entirety of the Naruto Shippuden storyline your main bad guys these are called the Akatsuki or Akatsuki, depending on how you pronounce it. And their main goal is to capture all of the Jinchurikis and just rip the beasts out of them. I won't go into why, because that's long-term story stuff. So, yeah. These two characters are, are Dodaira and Sorcery. The two artists of the Akatsuki. I'll go through all the other members soon. Well, in a minute. Dodaira has um, is a missing nin a rogue ninja from the village hidden in, in the rock. He is um, has explosion due to he can manipulate clay and force it to explode. And Sorcery is from the village hidden in the sand is a missing ninja and he can do the puppet jutsu and he's like the, a puppet master and their their main mission here is to capture Gara and all stuff happens and yeah and I'll just let you I'll let you watch it like because it's a really cool fight scene between Dadara and Gara and let's go in now to detail of my favourite characters in the entirety of Naruto. I just like villains. I don't know what it is. In every single anime I've ever watched, I've always liked the villains. Maybe that says something about me. <laughs> let's go into the Akatsuki now. With characters descriptions. First of all, like I said, we've got the Dara and Sorcery. Last week we came across uh, Itachi Uchiha of uh, from the Konoha, Sosuke's older brother and wielder of the Mongeku Sharingan or Awakened Sharingan State. He has a partner because Ikotsuki travel in pairs called Kisame, a rogue ninja from the village hidden in the mist, one of the missing members of the seven swordsmen of the mist, wielding the sword shark skin. Then we have Hidan, the immortal, um, member of the cult of Joshin, and he's weird. He's a really cool character, but he's weird. Like, he can do whole things where... 
voodoo jutsus and stuff. And his partner in crime is a guy called Kakusu, and he's from the village hidden in the waterfall. And he's the oldest member of the group, and he's can manipulate strings and sew his body back together and all sorts of weird stuff. Then there's two characters that are revealed later on in the storyline which I won't go into because they're big plot 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 devices and of course then we have uh, one of the weirdest members of the entire Nar Naruto multiverse is Zetsu. Now, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, Zetsu is uh, a ninja hailing from the village hidden in the grass. A very small village, not much is known about it, but he's weird. He's basically a big Venus flytrap man. He's really weird. Cool character. Originally, um, Orochimaru was a member as well, but he left. For reasons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Naruto Shippuden. It's... It, as I said, it gets a lot darker because of the fact that the Akatsuki essentially just want to kill Naruto. And they want to kill all of the beasts and stuff. And... That poses a severe threat to Naruto and the village. So it goes down some very dark avenues, especially with the whole aspect of loneliness for Naruto, the thing that he's alone in the world. Again, even though he's accepted now, he like through stuff that happens in the original He's kind of accepted more, but even though he's ex more accepted than ever, he's also more alone than ever. And that's very interesting as a character plot to watch, because it goes into the whole, like, yeah. There's also really, some really, really cool battle sequences in and the animation is bumped up in the original. You can tell that the animators have, like, put a lot of work into it. And it's also one of those really interesting times where, like in manga, that as time goes on, with its runtime, the animators have gotten better and better. And that happens in a lot of animated features that happen for a long time, all the way from stuff like like really famous stuff that's in Western stuff like The Simpsons. Season one stuff, the animation is spotty, but it's still real it's still good, it's animation, but as the series go on and more time and more times the animators have drawn the characters, it gets better and better and that happens a lot in anime. And you can definitely tell the lines are getting more fluid. The oh, the some of the battle animations in early in Naruto Shippuden are very good. Until there's a couple of scenes later on, especially later on in the series. We're talking like 200 episodes in, where I think they went to a different uh, animation company for the battle sequence. And you can really tell. It's not done in-house. It's put outside side help. And you can it kind of shows. So. There's more and more. You can definitely tell that. It's just overall a sort of. A bigger story. Now it's it's gone from being this little story about a plucky ninja who wants to better himself to being this grand thing with, like with big players on the field now 
players that could wipe out villages. The, the, the worst we've dealt with so far in the original ser series was people like Orochimaru. But now we're dealing with pretty much god level tier here. It's like playing a video game and beating the last boss and going, yeah, I did it. And then the second one comes out and it's just like, oh, that big boss was actually just small fry compared to all of these. Because some of the members of the Akatsuki get, um, yeah. But that reminds me, last week I said that I would go in more in depth with Kekka Genkai. And specifically, it's going to get you off the shelf, the Sharingan that the Uchihas possess. Now, I'll do that. The Sharingan is a blood trait possessed by the Uchihas, a founding member of Konoha, as well as the uh, Senju. And this gives them the a ocular power to basically see things just as they're about to happen. So, so if I go and punch there, he, the, the Jutsu in their eyes will be able to basically go like that. But it's so, and an Uchiha unlocks the different, like the wheels. So if you look, there's three wheels, three little symbols, and as they get better and better, they unlock them as they get older. But then there's the awakened state of the Sharingan, which is the Mongeku. And only certain Uchiha have ever unlocked this, all the way back to its founder. And what that does is it basically gives you immense ocular power to control stuff like Genjutsu, use Amaterasu, which is black fire. But that comes at a great cost. It basically, the more you use that ocular power, you basically give up your sight. There is a way to get it back and have like the next level of Mangeku, but that's later on that I won't go into because that's the eternal Mangeku and that's a whole different ball game. In Shivering there's also a, as well as the Byakugan which is the Huga and the Sharingan, there's also another blood, blood trait reveal which is the Renengon and that as well is an int that that god level tier which I'll go in which I won't go into here because it's late late game stuff. So overall, let's do my final thoughts now. I like it a lot better. Some people don't than the original. Still like the original, but this I think as a battle manga goes as a battle anime goes as a shonen I think it's one it's up there I mean it's no Dragon Ball but it's it's still it's still good but like, fantastic uh, certain spots are kind of again your typical shonen things are there for people that don't like shonen anime it's going to show but if you're like me, and you you grew up on Shonen stuff, then yeah. So I think I think you'll like it. I think you will. So I give it a thumbs up, and my recommendation. Um, yeah, that's been my show. I'll come back next week with stuff that's not Naruto. And, yeah. 
I'll see you in a bit. Bye.